Spotlight, moonlight, nigga, why you tripping, get your mood right. So I think that there's like a misconception of what this song means, like the whole term moonlight. So moonlight, welcome to Rap Philosophy. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for lyrical breakdowns and rap commentary. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rap Philosophy. In this video, we're going to be doing a lyrical breakdown of Moonlight by Tentacion. Moonlight is one of my favorite, is probably my favorite song by X. It's across the board, I've listened to all of X's music. There's something about this song that all I can say is if he were to stay alive and, you know, may he rest in peace, if he were to stay alive, like, I don't know what would have come from him in terms of the musical genius that he would have come up with. The, the song Moonlight to come from a rapper you know, a quote-unquote rapper, that song to come from the hip-hop genre to me is extraordinary. It's, I, I don't think I've, I, I, compared to anything else, if anyone knows a song to compare to, like, the style and the, I don't know, the style of Moonlight, what it did is crazy. I just think it, it set the bar for what he was going to do. It's just, just I don't even know what genre you consider that song. Um, it's its own unique style. It's just such, it's so cosmic. It's such a beautiful song to me. Um, uh, and let's just get into it. The way this starts. Yeah. Just the way this starts, and right here. Spotlight. The way it just, it's so cosmic. Like, there's something about the song, there's such a cosmic vibe. It's like. I don't know. I don't know what other words to use except cosmic. The, the vibe of the song is just like, it's not a typical hip hop song. It's just the the beats and sing. The ultimate. The ultimate hook. The ultimate hook spotlight moonlight spotlight moonlight and then go while you trip and get your mood right so i think that there's like a misconception of what this song means like the whole term moonlight so moonlight i think is a place of evil is a place of darkness that you know if you look at you know the light that's cast in the darkness of an area and that's why it's like spotlight moonlight, that area that you look in the darkness, you see a little a little light. Now, this comes from, I believe, the Batman, the old Batman, the Joker, where he is, you can see him, you know, in that that like light that comes, the moonlight that comes onto the character in the middle of darkness. And it's kind of like a play on the evil, the devil, the, the something that resides in the darkness. And there's a um a famous quote in the in the movie where he's talking to Bruce Wayne, Batman, telling him, did you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Where Bruce Wayne is calling him crazy and he's telling him, did you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Talking about, like, have you been through this experience? Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever danced with the devil? Like, he's kind of telling him that. And I think that that is the 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 kind of theme the environment the mood that x is laying here spotlight moonlight nigga why you tripping get your mood right why you why you're upset get your mood right get get good show you look good in the moonlight all these pussy niggas so bad mind spotlight moonlight over and over so so it's like he's talking about that place of darkness the the i think the grief that he's over, I think this song is just all about the grief that he was experiencing through that case that he was going through with that girl in that situation and trying to express that grief through this song, through that moment that of light in that darkness, the moonlight. Um, and he's saying, I think when he says, Ninga, why you tripping? Get your mood right. Talking to himself. Like when you're in this situation, why you tripping? When you're looking at this, get, you know, fix yourself. Get it together. Get yourself together. Sure, you look good in the moonlight. Now he's talking about Shorty looking good in the moonlight, like seeing something in there. Maybe that girl, maybe that thing that's attractive to you, um, whatever that thing might be, that thing that, that shimmers in the darkness, that attracts you, that's really evil, or at least has the presence of evil. Um, 
you know, so he's talking about that. And then he says, all these pussy niggas so bad mind. So everyone around him is, you know, has a bad mind. And as we know, <laughs> that ended up, unfortunately, you know, um, playing itself out by people who attacked him in real life. But, you know, I, I thought initially when he said all these pussy niggas so about my, I, I thought he was saying all these pussy niggas so about mine. They're just so jealous of me. But some reports say that the lyrics are saying all these pussy niggas so bad mind. Bad mind being like a Jamaican slang for someone who is just evil, jealous, you know, gossiping about people, talking about people, just that evil person that wants to like wish his bad on people, which unfortunately I think a lot of people have for X, um, jealous of his success. Spotlight, Moonlight, Nigga, White and then it just goes on and on. Nigga so bad mind. Feel like I'm destined. I don't need no Smith and Weston, no. Who are you testing? Fuck a scandal, here's your lesson, no. Knife in a testing. Taking shots at all your breath, you know. Feel like I'm damn man. You know you fucking playing This verse, I feel like, expresses his the total grief that he's feeling with that situation. He says, feel like I'm destined. I don't need no Smith & Wesson. That line to me, t though, that bar right there to me is the climactic career of X. The transformation from what hip hop has been doing, right? Which we see obviously like most of a lot of hip hop, especially with the young artists, you know, they can't make a song unless they're talking about, you know, jewelry or guns, which is fine for the, you know, for what it, that is. But X wanted to be, I feel like, I feel like he was in a different realm, trying to be like an artist, like an artist who makes music, like, you know, people who just most artists like tra are transformative, like Drake, you know, you're not stuck in something, you're just making music that's just like transcends, you know, you know, what that limited space. So I feel like I'm destined, I don't need no Smith or Wesson. It's like he's saying, I feel like I'm destined, I don't need no Smith or Wesson. I have a plan, I have something I'm gonna, I, I have something I wanna do, create. I don't need guns to talk about, I don't need to do the thing that everybody else is doing. That to me is what that line means, and I'm not gonna do what everyone else is doing. Boy, who you testing? Fuck a scantron, here's your lesson. Knife and intestine. Take your shots at all your brethren. Feel like I'm damaged? Girl, I know you fucking planned this. So if you're talking about that girl, um, boy, who you testing? Fuck a scantron, here's your lesson. Let me tell you what really happened. And he's saying knife and intestine. Again, that grief, that the thing about that situation with that case with that girl. Um, Take your shots at all your breath. And I think he's talking about that girl again. Like you're attacking someone that you love, someone that's your best friend, your your brother. I feel like I'm damaged. Girl, I know you fucking planned this. Um, so I don't know anything about like the truth behind that case or whatever it is, but this is his expression of the story. Then I love this part that where he sounds like he's kind of whiny, but it's just I well, you fucking playing That, I, he's saying something so simple, but just he makes it sound like he can repeat it and make it sound new and interesting. And he is saying something different in each one. So he's saying, again, talking about that, those back and forth feelings between him and that girl. All alone, call my phone, make me feel right. So he's ending every one of these lines with make me feel right, make me feel right, make me feel right. All alone, call my phone, make me feel right. Girl, you know when you call, make me feel right. All alone, call my phone, make me feel right. Girl, you know, when you call, make me feel right. So just seeking that pleasure in that person, which if you go back to one of X's first interviews he ever did when he first got out of jail and first blew up from the song Look At Me, he talks about how he put all his self-worth in this person, in this girl, and how you should never do that, obviously. I feel like that he's bringing that back here, where with that pain you have, you're just putting it into that person and you want every time you need help or you need to feel pleasure, you go back to that person instead of being dependent to yourself. And then I, I guess that's it. Like, and then that's the song, I guess, repeats. That's it. So that's that's Moonlight by X. You know, again, I think to me, this song was the song that was the epitome. Of course, Sad was obviously his most one of his most popular songs. But to me, this was that that song that really like it didn't blow up to the point of sad because sad was way more like 
to the masses. Moonlight was to me the epitome of what X's musical, you know, career was gonna go into a whole new level. So, um, rest in peace, X. This was Moonlight. Um, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.